morning. Welcome to the BYU Museum of Art. My name is Philip Balzo and I'm one of the educators here at the museum. And it's my great pleasure to show you one of my truly favorite paintings here in a new exhibition titled Becoming America. This new exhibition deals with uh, the, the idea of America, what it is becoming, what it, is, what it stands for, uh, its land, its people, and the stories America tells. The work that I want to show you is this one right here by Edwin Evans from Lehigh, Utah. Now, obviously, I'm just showing you a postcard, but there's a good reason for this. Uh, it's a lovely work uh, depicting um, a, a woman in a field of, of grain. She's just finished harvesting, but you're probably missing some of the details that truly make this work special. What are you exactly missing? Well, you don't see a frame, you don't have good lighting, and you certainly don't see texture or the colors that the painting um, is trying to convey. So why don't we look at the original artwork so you can see just what great um, things await you and what things you would miss if you did not see the original. And I invite you to come to the museum and see this wonderful work because when we do look at a postcard, we sometimes get the sense that we've seen the work, we know what it looks like or if you look at it on a digital device, perhaps. But the original artwork, number one, look at the size of this work compared to the postcard. Um, truly, Edwin Evans put a lot of effort into this work. Um, beautifully framed, beautifully lit. Um, and then I want you to come close and take a look at the texture uh, of this work that highlight some of the individual uh, grain um, guess uh, pieces of grain that are still left in the field that has been uh, carefully um, gleaned and, and harvested. And here you see the grain stacks beautifully lit uh, from the, the noonday sun. Um, and of course then the lady in the background who presumably has done the bulk of the work uh, on this farm. We don't know whether she's a widow, but we certainly don't see any machinery. We don't see um, a farmer or helpers. She is alone in this effort um, and exudes a sense of dignity for this hard work that she performs in the middle of the day. Because if you look at the light, it does come from straight above and the shadows are very short, suggesting that she's working in, in the heat of the day. And, uh, and deserves our respect, certainly, for this heroic effort. So Edwin Evans then falls into a tradition of realists, of French realists. It might be compared to somebody like Jean-François Millet or Gustave Courbet, who also like to depict workers, farmers, peasants, uh, those who do the work uh, that we benefit from. This painting was, in fact, painted in France, uh, although Edwin Evans was from Utah. He was from Lehigh, like I might have mentioned earlier. And how does a boy from Lehigh get to Paris uh, and study at the academy? Well, it's an interesting story because he went along with four other Utah painters, J.B. Fairbanks, John Hafen, and Loris Pratt. He went to Paris not on his, uh, as his own idea, but he was sent there officially by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as an art missionary. In those days, the church, great, uh, through the efforts of um, uh, Elder George Q. Cannon, sent several um, aspiring artists to back to Paris to study at the academy and to hone their skills. As a matter of fact, Edwin Evans didn't really uh, decide to become a painter until uh, age 28, which is really late for someone to pick up painting earnestly. But he entered the academy uh, in Paris, and according to his friend J.T. Harwood, another important Utah artist, he advanced more quickly than any of his colleagues, American colleagues, uh, through these two years in Paris and made greater progress um, than any others. Upon their return back to Utah, they received important commissions by the church. Uh, such as the Salt Lake City uh, Temple murals, as well as later those in the Carson, Alberta temples. He also became the head of the Utah, uh, or the University of Utah Art Department, or the chair rather, um, and, and served in that capacity for 20 years, teaching such notables as 
um, LeCon Stewart and Mabel Fraser, if you're familiar with, with Utah artists, these are really important names. So he was really in the middle, um, taught by that first generation of Utah artists and then instructing that next generation and was really at the center of art production in Utah. And what I really love about um, this painting, and I want to say that one more time, so that when you come and see it yourself, I want you to take a really close look at just the textures in this painting. Uh, he applies a thick layer of, of texture that might almost be called impasto, something Van Gogh did in, in, uh, in France uh, around the same time. And by the way, he went in 1890. This painting was also done around this time, so early in his time in, in Paris. Um, so thick uh, textures. But then in the background, the painting really flattens out. The colors become more muted. Um, we see a strong sense of dimensionality, so he uses what's called linear perspective to suggest uh, the recession of depth. So he shows us his training, he shows he's an accomplished artist or a burgeoning artist, but then he also dabbles in these things that are happening in, in France, which are called Impressionism, that is a looser brushstroke, and working out in, in, in the open uh, uh, sky, I guess, uh, to capture real sunlight, and this scene is drenched in sunlight, it, it glows with light, but it should not be confused with Impressionism. Because if you just take a quick look at the painting here on, our, uh, on my right uh, by Edward Redfield, an American Impressionist, we see truly what Impressionism is in contrast to this type of painting. It is composed of loose, thick uh, brush strokes, and they seem cha chaotic when you look at them closely and only come into focus uh, and have any sense of meaning when you step back and see the picture as a whole. This is truly what Impressionism is about, and perhaps even more so, a better example perhaps yet, this one over here by Child Hazem, where you again see those individual brush strokes side by side, an outdoor scene, lots of sun, it's truly about color and about sun. Uh, there is no figure, this is a, a pure landscape, uh, just like the one by Redfield. But these are flanking our painting by Edwin Evans, uh, left and right, to perhaps um, be in conversation with this work and, and give us a sense of the art historical context in which uh, Edwin Evans was working. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to invite you to come to the museum to see this exhibition and perhaps pick up the gallery guide or the activities guide in which you can have some interesting activities to engage with the works. Also for children, some really fun activities including I Spy. A prize can be won at the end of it. And finally, I want to invite you to join us for a gallery talk by the curator of this exhibition, uh, Dr. Kenneth Hartwigsen, on uh, uh, the 20th, next week, Wednesday at noon.